Put yourself in those shoes. It's Friday afternoon, and all of a sudden they've asked you to be the sideline reporter. You've never done it before, so what do you do? Well, at this point of the game, research may be out the window, but maybe you can do a little bit when you get to the field and talk to some players that are there, talk to some coaches while they're warming up, and just find out a couple of quick storylines, because oftentimes a sideline reporter has come to maybe twice a quarter at the most, oftentimes just once a quarter. But the sideline reporter does shine brightest right at halftime. So what's the most important part when you're getting ready for halftime? When you're getting ready for halftime, you want to make sure you have your questions ready. So the flow of the game will dictate what questions you may ask, whether it's about how well the defense play or how well the offense play. Or maybe there was a certain key player they were all focused on they talked about in the pregame you heard about, and that's the guy you talk about with the head coach. If you're doing an unbiased broadcast, you'll talk to the winning coach going to halftime, and you'll talk to the trailing coach coming out of the locker room after halftime is over. So you kind of have you kind of an idea who your questions are targeted to before each half. And then again, if the game is tied, you go ahead and make a decision as to who you want to go ahead and interview. But you've already got questions, so it really doesn't matter which coach you go with. When I say have your questions ready, be sure of that first question, because that first question oftentimes can lead to a different question and not something you've already prepared for. The coach could answer it in a way in which you want to do a quick follow-up. But the most important part about a sideline reporter, especially at halftime, is you have to be quick. Why do you have to be quick? Well, because the coach needs to get to the locker room to talk to his team and further motivate them or yell at them or whatever it might be. And you don't wanna sit there and ask him three or four questions. No coach wants to wait that long. Oftentimes, you can find an assistant coach if your interview is going to go a little bit longer than you may have thought. And sometimes you can get two, maybe three questions out of an assistant coach. But the main thing you need to do is set up beforehand before the game even begins and say, hey, we're gonna to come to you at halftime, whether it's before if you're winning, or if you're trailing, we'll come to you when you come back out of the locker room. Set that up before the game ever begins and don't just surprise it on the coach right at halftime and say, hey, can I grab you for a quick second? Now, when you're conducting an interview, oftentimes people don't really know how to hold the microphone. For instance, a lot of people will just hold it like this when you have a whole lot of natural sound around you. It's best, just like your headphone set, is to hold the microphone as close to your mouth as possible. So when you are being heard, you can be heard on the broadcast. And the other part of that is, I've always been asked, well, do you hand the microphone to the coach when you ask him a question? No, never give your mic away. Why? Well, because oftentimes the coach isn't gonna hold it right, you won't be able to hear him, and you may never get it back. So you wanna make sure that you don't ever give your mic away. So for instance, we're at halftime, I've got my head coach right here, and what am I gonna do when I ask him a question? I'm gonna hold the mic right up to his mouth. I'm not gonna hold it down here, I'm gonna hold it up here so when he speaks, you'll be able to hear what he has to say to the rest of the fans, whether it's on TV or on radio. Now let's say you're in maybe basketball or a quieter venue and you can use what's called an omnidirectional mic. Oftentimes that mic can be held between the two subjects at an equal distance and the microphone will pick up both individuals without the microphone having to be placed in front of either individual's mouth. One of the most important parts of being a sideline reporter is following up on injuries. They happen in every game just about. Whether it's a cramp or whether it's something more serious like a knee injury and they have to be carted off. Either way, it's really your job as a sideline reporter to find out what the injury is if you can. You can't really find out from the trainer. They're not allowed to tell you those things, but you can ask the player or somebody else and they can give you what injury that might be. And then you can say, well, is he gonna be able to come back in the game? What's his status? Is he gonna be taped up and brought back or is he gonna be carted off? Whatever it might be. And then of course, later in the game, let's say he comes out in, without his pads on and then you can tell everybody and let everybody know, hey, this player's not gonna play the rest of the game. Again, it's up to that sideline reporter because oftentimes the play-by-play -play and color commentators are watching the field and not the sidelines as to what's happening with those injuries. And then maybe one final thing for a sideline reporter. When the game is over, depending upon how your broadcast works, you might be asked to interview the winning coach after the game if you're doing an unbiased broadcast. Or maybe if it's your team and you still want to interview a coach from your team after a loss or a win, go ahead and make sure you have that set up before the game. And then that's your key, your key to shine again as the sideline reporter to make sure you ask a good question and maybe a good follow-up question and listen to the coach's answers and maybe even have a player or two ready in the wings to interview right after the coach to really tie the whole broadcast together. So that's our video today on how to be a good sideline reporter. If you like the video, hit the like button. And while you're there, go ahead and subscribe to the Creative Foundry for more videos like this one.